All right, we're going to solve polynomials and rational inequalities. So here's the steps. You're going to write it in general form. If you have to get a common denominator, get a common denominator, but ultimately you want a zero on one side of the equation. Locate the key numbers from the numerator and the denominator, and I'll show you that. Create a number line, and then test values, and then check for the correct sign of the problem. So this seems really vague, but let me walk you through it. All right, so first of all, here we go x squared plus 4x plus 4 greater than or equal to 9. So it's in general form. It doesn't have a denominator, so I don't have to worry about part 1. But I do need to move the 9 over here. So I'm going to subtract 9 to move that 9 over. So I'll have x squared plus 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. Once it's set equal to 0 or greater than 0, whatever, 0 is on this side, then I work to solve this for x. All right, so it's a trinomial, so I'm going to factor it. And I know that if I do x plus 5 times x minus 1, that'll give me this when I multiply it out. All right, then I'm going to set each one of these equal to 0 and solve it. So this would be x is equal to negative 5, x is equal to 1. Now, these are the values, these are the key numbers here on number two. Now, create a number line. So if I create a number line, I have a negative five and I have a one. Now, neither one of these is in a denominator, but I do notice that in my inequality is an or equal to, right? Since it's an or equals to, I'm gonna put closed circles. And then I'm gonna test some values. So what does that mean? Well, it means to take a value, and usually the easiest value to choose is a zero. So if I choose zero, if I'm testing zero, it falls between negative five and one, right? If I take that zero and I'm gonna plug it into this equation where I set it equal to zero, and I'm gonna plug in zero for x. So I have zero plus four times zero minus five. I wanna know is it greater than or equal to zero? Well, that's zero and that's zero, and negative five is a negative number, right? So what I really care about here is that it came out negative. So I'm gonna make myself a note, it came out negative. Then I test a point over here, like a negative six. So if I do negative six squared plus four times negative six minus five, let's see what happens here. Negative six squared gives me 36. Negative six times four gives me minus 24 minus five. So 36 minus 24 minus five gives me a positive seven. So ultimately, all I need to know is that it's positive. And then if I test a number on the right of the one, let's try two. So I have two squared plus four times two plus, or I'm sorry, minus five. So I have four plus eight, well that's 12, minus five is seven, and that's a positive number as well. So I know it's positive. That's what I want to know. Now the question is, well, what part of this answer is my solution? Well, it depends on your inequality. It is a greater than or equal to, and ultimately we did greater than or equal to zero, which translates to a positive number. Positive numbers are greater than zero, right? So that means my solution are where the plus signs are. Where is it positive? So my answer then would be from, I'm sorry, from negative infinity to negative five with the bracket, and then I jump, I skip that middle section, and then I go from a one to a positive infinity. This is my answer set for this problem. All right, let's look at number two. Now there is one little typo on number two here. I want you to fix this. And this should be a minus right here, a minus two x. So that's a typo in your notes, so fix that if it's not already fixed for you. But first of all, notice that I need to get a common denominator because I need x to be my common denominator, which means I'm going to have to multiply this second term by x over x. So I'm going to end up with 2 minus 2x is less than 0, all of this over x. So now I've got the common denominator. Now I need to find my key points. So to find key points, you're going to separate the numerator and separate the denominator. All right. So I'm going to take that numerator. Oh, this is x squared, I'm sorry, isn't it? 2 minus 2x squared, and you're going to set it equal to 0. Now the denominator, whatever it is, cannot equal 0 because you cannot divide by 0. So make sure you set that e not equal to 0. 
Then if I solve this, so I have negative 2x squared equals negative 2. Divide by negative 2, so x squared is equal to 1. Well, if I take the square root of both sides, that means x is could be plus or minus 1, right, as a square root. And then I know that x cannot be 0. So now it's number line time. So here's negative 1, here's 0, and here's 1. Now, I know 0 cannot, it cannot be equal to 0, so this one has to be an open circle. The others, notice it's just a less than here in our original equation, so it's still open circles everywhere else. Now I need to test points to find out where is it positive and where is this going to come out negative. Now, obviously those points between negative 1 and 0 are going to be fractions, and I don't really feel like substituting in fractions. Do you? I don't think you do. So what I would do in this case is pick some numbers like to the left. Over here, left of negative 1 is like negative 2. So if I plug into this equation right here, um, I would do this. I would do 2 minus 2 times negative 2 squared over negative 2. And see what comes out, positive or negative. So I have 2. So negative 2 squared is positive 4, but times negative 2 makes it negative 8 over negative 2, which is going to be negative 6 over negative 2. Ultimately, that gives me a positive result, right? So this is going to give me a positive result. And now let's test a point over here with a positive 2. Let's do the same thing. So 2 minus 2, 2 squared over a positive 2. Well, 2 minus 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, which is going to give me negative 6 over positive 2, but that's giving me a negative result. So this is negative. So then what's happening in between? Well, this gets a little tricky, but we can do this. So here's what I want you to realize. What we're really doing by testing points is deciding. When I plug in these values, like up here I plugged in a negative 2, and here I plugged in a 2. I'm plugging it in the equation as the x value, right? What's coming out is the y value. And this is telling me the y's are positive and the y's are negative, respectively. What the heck does that mean? Well, that means if I looked at the graph where, I, where x is negative 2, the graph would be above the x-axis because it's positive. Where x is positive 2, the, the y values would be below. So what I want you to notice is what it looks like on the graph. So I'm going to show you on the graph really quickly. Okay, so what I've done is put our equation, our original equation, in the y equals, and I'm looking at the graph. So I'm going to zoom in because if you look at our key points on our number line over here on our work, it goes from negative 1 to 1, right? So I don't need to go crazy with this. I just need to be at negative 1 to 1. So if I'm looking at my y x or x values, right, negative 1 to 1, switch. There it is. There it is. I can see 1 and negative 1. All right. Now, what am I doing? When I plug in points, like when I'm plugging in this negative 2, I'm looking for what is the y value going to come out to be, positive or negative? Well, if you look at the graph, that negative 2 is telling me what's happening to my graph when x is negative 2 or less. So if you look at the picture of the graph where x is negative 2 going left, my y values are all positive. They're above the x-axis. So it's a positive. But what about over here where y, x is 2? Well, when I plug that in, it comes out a negative number. So that indicates to me that everything from 1 moving right, meaning my x values are getting larger, it's going to come out a negative number. And if you look at the graph, you will see that's what's happening over here. When I go past 1, my y values become negative. Mm -hmm. So then what's happening in between the 0 and 1 and the 0 and the negative 1? Well, we don't want to mess with fractions, but we can look at our graph. So look at it. From 0 to negative 1, just this little piece right in here, what's happening? From 0 to negative 1, the y values are below the x-axis, which is an indicator that it would be negative, the y values are negative. And then what about from one or zero to positive one? Well, where is the line? The line is above the x-axis, so that means my y values are positive. So look at that. Now notice this pattern here. It goes positive, negative, positive, negative, doesn't it? It will alternate 
most of the time. There is a chance it may not, but most of the time it's going to alternate, and I'll address that in a moment. But for now, if you can pick out some areas that you can plug in really quickly, you can know the signs will alternate, and then we'll pick the correct sign that we need for our question. Okay, so hopefully you caught that. The, the signs will alternate based on the graph, all right? Now, what do I need though? What, what sign do I need for this question? It says less than zero. So what numbers are less than zero? Well, the negative numbers are. So my answer will be the sections with the negative values. So it'll be uh, negative one with a, with a parenthesis to zero with a parenthesis, and then it jumps over to positive one with a parenthesis all the way to infinity. So it jumps that section. All right, so it's only picking up the areas on the number line or the x-axis that will have a negative y value. Now these will go faster. I'm going slow on purpose. What about number three here? X plus two squared is less than 25. Now, I, first thing I would need to do is move that 25 over and subtract it. So I have a zero on one side of my equation. That's what I want. Then I would need to square the x plus twos. x plus two times x plus two minus 25. So remember, I have to FOIL this. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 25 is less than 0. Now I combine like terms. I'll have x squared plus 4x minus 21 is less than 0. Now I don't have to worry about common denominators, but I do now need to solve this for x. So I'm going to try to factor it. So I think about, okay, what two numbers multiply to 21 but add to a positive 4? Um, how about a 7 and a negative 3? That'll work. So x plus 7, x minus 3. So if I solve for x, x would be negative 7, x would be a positive 3. And it's not an or equals to scenario, so let's think about this. Here's negative 7, here's a positive 3. So these are the open circles. Now I just need to pick a key point. There's only three sections, right? So let's pick an easy point, like a 0. And then I would plug in the zero like right here and see if this comes out negative or positive, okay? So I have zero plus two squared minus 25. Well, that's two squared. Four minus 25 is gonna come out a negative, right? So that means it's negative in here. And if the pattern follows, if I check a four over here on the right, let's see what happens. I get four plus two squared minus 25. Well, four plus two is 6. 6 squared is 36 minus 25 is a positive number. It's positive 11. So it looks like we're going to alternate. Now how can I check that? Well, I could go into my graph and my y equals in my calculator and I would type in this equation right here and look to make sure that the y values are positive from negative and x of negative 7 lower y values are negative from negative 7 to positive 3, and that y values are positive from positive 3 and forward. But then what is it I need on this question? This question says less than 0. So I want the values that are less than 0. So that would be the negatives. So I just want this section right here. So my answer then would be negative 7 to 3. with parentheses because it is open circles. All right, let's try it again. A couple more. So this one is gonna be rational. I have to make the common denominator. So my common denominator is gonna be x, which means I need to multiply this guy by x over x. So it's one minus five x greater than zero. So I separate the top and the bottom. And I solve. Now this x on the bottom cannot equal zero. So I have to remember to do that. So negative 5x equals negative 1. So x will be positive 1 fifth. All right. So I have 0. I know it cannot equal 0. And then I have 1 fifth. And it's open circles. So let's pick a value that we like. It's easy. Like let's pick a 1, which falls way over here on the right. So if I plug a 1 into this equation right here, 1 minus 5 times 1 over 1. 1 minus 5 over 1 would be negative 4 over 1. Ultimately, that's a negative solution, right? 
So this would be negative. Now there's something going on in the middle here. I don't want to mess with the fractions, but let's try something negative, a negative one over here. So one minus five times negative one over negative one. One plus five over negative one, six over negative one, ultimately a negative number. So it, it could be, it's probably gonna be alternating. So I'm gonna make that assumption. And then I'm gonna go jump to my calculator and check the graph. Okay, so what's happening between zero and one fifth? Well, between zero and one fifth, that is where X is zero and one fifth. That is this piece right here, isn't it? Going all this way. And look, the graph is going this direction. That means it's a positive Y value. So this does, um, confirm the alternation of its signs, which is what we wanted. So I can move forward with my solution, knowing that this equation is asking me for greater than zero sections, so I want the greater than zero. So my answer then would just be zero to one-fifth. All right, so the graph does help um, confirm your answer. Now let's do this one more. This one looks a little scarier, but it's not. We can just do it. Uh, first thing I have to do is move that 3 over. So I'm going to have 2x minus 7 over x minus 5 minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Now I've got to get a common denominator of x minus 5, right? So I've got to do this, this thing, this distributing. So I've got 2x minus 7 minus 3 times x minus 5, all of that over x minus 5. So let's clean that up. 2x minus 7 minus 3x plus 15. Combining like terms, I'll have negative x plus 8 over x minus 5, and it's still less than or equal to 0. Okay, now we separate. Here's the numerator, and the denominator, we know it cannot equal 0. So let's solve this. So this would mean that x, is, um, x equals 8, right? So there's one key point, and over here, x cannot be equal to 5. So I have 5 and I have 8. So it cannot equal 5, but can it equal 8? Yes, this is in or equals 2, so I would color it in. Okay, so to keep things really simple, I would take this equation, and this is the one that I would plug in the x values into just to test some points. So if I wanted to test like, six. Let's do negative six plus eight over six minus five. What do I get? I get a positive two over one, so it's positive. That tells me that this piece is positive, and I'm going to assume it alternates. That would be negative, and since it's a less than question, I want the less than sections. Now, it looks like then my answer would then be negative infinity, negative infinity to five, open parenthesis, and then a bracket, eight to positive infinity. There's my answer. Now, sidebar, if the only time it doesn't follow that alternating pattern thing is if you looked at your graph and it did something like this, like it bounced back at this key point because it's positive here and it's positive here, right? So if there was a bouncing off the x-axis, that's when it wouldn't alternate points. That doesn't happen very often, but you can always graph it just to double check. All right, double check your answers. Okay, I know this has been a long video. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in class.